It's been a long time. Over three years since the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite 5 11th generation got released back in 2021 September. Asides from a quick color change with the 16GB Agave, the last Paperwhite felt like forever ago. So here it is, the latest release. Thank you to Amazon Japan for sending us this sample. This is the all new 12th generation Kindle Paperwhite. The screen is bigger. It's the fastest Kindle ever made. It's waterproof, but what else can it do? And how is it different than the previous generation? Let's start with some side-by-sides. Unlike the jump between the previous generation and the current generation of the basic, which had very little differences, the two paper whites are actually quite different. It's now a 7-inch screen, the same 300 ppi, same 16 levels of grayscale, the unit has increased in size, however slims down by 0.3 millimeters. The fact that it has a higher contrast ratio with 25% faster page turns, that is the definition of Carta 1300, even though they don't outright tell you it is. The new Paperwhite is also made from 29% recycled materials, and the structural frame is made from 90% recycled magnesium, as well as the package being 100% recycled the last generation featuring none of these ecological benefits. WPA3 and OWE security protocols have been added. The charging speed has doubled when plugged in, down to 2.5 hours compared to 5 hours on the previous gen. Are all of these enough changes to warrant a generational gap? Well, so far, kind of, because structurally and visibly it is different. But what else can it do? How does it perform? Let's check it out. Let's just take a moment and appreciate this color. Also the fact that it wraps around the side. I understand that the color can't be really used as ammunition towards the review, but it does kind of matter. And that's why they have multiple colors on multiple units, and they're actually redoing the scribe to feature a different color. They are trying to get away from just having these cookie cutter black slabs, because if you had a paper white and it just looked like that, it just feels like it's just another stamped out e-reader. But this definitely does give it some character, hence the foresight to make these colors in the first place. It is a flush screen and bezel. It is very lightweight, all things considered, but doesn't feel cheap. It feels nice and tight with very minimal snapping with the battery at the back. You get the light sensor up top because we do have the signature edition here. All the sides are clean. And on the bottom, you get the USB-C, you get a status indicator light and Unfortunately, sorry guys, the power button is at the bottom, which not a lot of people like, our, ourselves included. Now we have to weigh this because we have to see exactly what we're looking with because the website says actual manufacturing could change the size and weight of the unit itself. So we have 215, which is not that light, but it's not that heavy, and it is more towards the lighter spectrum of things. We are updated to the latest possible firmware version, and we will tell you that right out of the gates, it is a very, very similar experience. It's the same thing. So it's basically how it works is your Kindle has the latest software, but a lot of the previous gens also get the same software. So what that means is it's a familiar experience. So if you're looking for a parallel move, there's going to be no learning curve because there's really nothing that this has to offer that's blatantly brand new that pops out at you. You get your warm lights, you get your cool lights, and you can do a combination of both like so. So you can go really warm and really white. The white is still kind of blue and you do have auto brightness. And yes, auto brightness is dictated off of the sensor up top, not the time of day based off of your time settings. That'll be for the ones that don't have a light sensor. You have sync, airplane mode, Bluetooth, all settings, and dark mode. Dark mode's really nice, you know, honestly. It's device wide as well. It is not just on the menu. It is not just on books. It's on every single page. And I must say it is looking really sharp. And because this is perspectively using Carta 1300 based off of the specifications, although it is not advertised, as we said, it is very, very black when it comes to the overall contrast. And don't worry, we are doing comparisons against this 
and the previous model. So don't worry about that. You can toggle dark mode off and on right there. And it's also in the settings actually, which we will visit real quick to show you guys the settings. Now, this is just going to be the same as you've ever seen. And if you've watched our matcha video, you'll know that it's pretty much the same thing, except for screen and brightness when you have the automatic one. But outside of that, it's going to be the exact same experience as basically the 11th gen Paperwhite because everything's carried over. You have your accessibility for voice view reader, which is really nice. That's how you get TTS. You can watch all of our YouTube videos on that. You get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You get device information, device options, where a lot of your information is going to be. Whisper sync, power saver, factory resets, what have you. And you get help, home library accessibility, things like that. It's all just very surface level easy to use settings because this isn't an android device this isn't a developer friendly device they don't want you going too deep into the settings to change things that alter the inherent nature of the unit when it comes to the home screen this is the home screen now very little amount of the home screen is yours the rest is theirs and what we mean by that is if you look here your library are the pieces of content you have and there's only three and a quarter of images that belong to you all the bottom the search bar and the store icon are all Amazon's that searches your device and the store that is the store and all this is just more of the store sign up for unlimited buy this subscribe to that sign up for prime it's all just kind of services thrown at you which is fine it's their choice and that comes with the territory and it comes at no surprise but that is the reality of the home screen although i do like how in the last four or five updates they've added this scroll thing so it's quite handy now let's go over to the store experience and check it out the store is going to have a toggle between Amazon Kindle and Amazon Audible, which is really nice. And this gives you the ability to toggle between the two stores seamlessly so that you can actually choose your audiobooks or choose a Kindle book. And sometimes Kindle books will have audiobooks attached to them like that. It says audiobook with audible narration for $7.49, etc. So you actually can parallel the two stores sometimes and cross over. You can also try a sample, add to your list, view the audible format, etc. And then as you scroll down, you get all the information and editorials and you get all the feedbacks and everything like that you can click back to top to go to the top pressing back goes back x exits out the entire thing altogether amazon has the biggest ecosystem of books audiobooks manga everything and it's all going to depend on where you access the store from your experience may vary but overall the store is robust with content the most important thing about this unit is reading books it's an ebook reader aka an e-reader so let's check it out also claimed by them this is the fastest kindle ever the fastest kindle so here we go let's look at some page turns i gotta say that's already fast and you know why it's even more impressive is because there's not a whole lot left over there's a little bit of remnants of the previous screen and you can change the settings to refresh every single page if you want to kind of kick it otherwise you'll have to do various things like you just saw that flash there to force it to do a refresh but otherwise it is an incredibly white screen and how we can show this further is going to the largest possible font and this you can do font layout more more is all your additional settings show the clock while reading highlights menu etc so we're going to embolden choose the highest and then let's look at the white space look how absolutely clear that is they call it a paper white for a reason it does have a very very white background is it as white as the advertised image on the box no it's not this is actually a shade whiter which mm, i don't know what you call that in terms of advertising but it's not that white but it is very very white it is flawlessly clear the blacks against the whites give you a clean concise line that borders between the two all the circular images are very curved the high ppi means you're going to have no blurriness you're going to have no pixelation this is an incredibly clear experience and because it doesn't have color because there's no kaleido it really does just let the black and white content just completely shine and another thing if you're new to e-readers this is kind of why you buy these you see the light shining on this if you were to do that on a tablet you can't see it because that's the whole thing about it is you just catch the film lights also 
the viewing angle is absurd. You could go maybe three degrees and still make out the actual characters themselves. It's something that only this technology really does, e-paper, and no other technology technically does it. Now, the Matcha basic version had very quick highlighting, and let's just see if this should obviously be here. It is very quick. Now, the thing is, is that we have been reviewing Kindles for a long time, and we've always noticed that highlighting seems to be a little bit of a Achilles heel of theirs as it just takes time to process. But this latest line of Kindles just seems to have highlighting down to a T. It is so quick that it's almost following my finger as I do it. It's a little change, but it's something we've noticed all the same. Depending on the order in which you're watching our content, if you saw the basic first or this, it doesn't matter, but we'll say a lot of the same things because it's true. Kindles are very underrated manga readers. We see some devices like Onyx and HiRead and MeBook heavily advertise that they're good for manga, but Kindles are above and beyond when it comes to it. And remember, they started everything back in seven years ago with the manga model, 32 GB out of Japan, which introduced this, which is the rapid page turn engine. You can scroll your finger and depending on how much speed you add, you can go through the book at a rapid pace. And they started all that and they carried it over and it is no longer exclusive to Japanese models and works on everything. And I must say, the claims that this is the fastest Kindle ever. We're going to do a speed test a little bit later, but I would say that that is a proper claim. This thing is ridiculously fast. And remember, Paperwhite's up until the Paperwhite 3 were having RAM issues. When you opened things like PDFs, they would crash because they didn't have enough RAM to so much as manage the navigation of the respective application, be it reading a manga, reading a PDF, going into the settings menu, etc. This is blazingly quick for a Kindle, especially for a device that has no user controllable speed mode because they don't. Pinch and zooming is very quick as well. The renders are flash happy. They happen so quick, faster than the basic. We would say that for sure, even though we don't have speed specs. It is evidently quicker if you compare the two videos. This is so fast. I cannot believe that this Kindle is moving this quickly. I can believe that e-paper moves this quickly because we've been introduced into speed modes and X mode and ultra fast and refresh technologies and Dasung's godlike level, but I would say this is blazingly quick for the top three, which is Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and Amazon. This is doing a phenomenal job at refresh, at retaining consistency and not having too much ghosting or artifacting of any kind. Glorious job. We're not being critical, but I mean, it's kind of our job. Their website says, immerse yourself in reading, no social media. And what is one of the only things they have here outside of reading? Social media. This is Goodreads, which is a social media platform, except it's not something you can upload images to and tell people, hey, I'm drinking a Diet Coke today, hashtag what's up. It's just about books. So you can create groups, leave reviews, etc. So we have 982 friends. Don't want to dust our own shoulders, but uh, friend up if you guys want to say hello. And Goodreads is easily accessible. You can show what you want to read, currently reading, things that you've read, and you can toggle and say you've done each one. So you can just click them like that and say, I have read it, currently reading, etc. And then you can see what your other people are saying, all your friend lists, etc. It is technically social media, but not in the traditional sense of just having upload freedom to put whatever you want. It is book centric. Something that shouldn't be slow anymore, seeing that this is the fastest Kindle ever, is the web browser, and it is no longer experimental ever since a couple generations ago. It does still say it has limited memory and is kind of earmarked for simple sites rather than complex ones, but you know, we have faith in this unit, it might actually be pretty good. Let's look at the keyboard while we're here. We're going to type in good e-reader. That all happened very quickly, didn't miss any characters, didn't slow down, didn't try to catch up. It was all very consistent across the board. Now we're not gonna cut because we wanna show you the actual speed. And when we get here, look at that. Look at that. You know, small fun fact, this is one of the only opportunities 
to utilize a speed mode on the Kindle because it technically is in a little bit of an A2 mode. You see a lot of the remnants in the background, you see a lot more artifacting and a lot more ghosting. And you'll also notice this is why the web browser doesn't look like the other content on your device. Everything seems just a little bit more fuzzy and you can contrast what you're seeing here versus the elements up top which are not changing. This part is ever changing. This is the only time you're able to really go into an A2 mode without Without having any control over it because you don't have control over it. There's no selector button or toggle unfortunately. I personally would like to see an A2 toggle here but it might mess with the simplicity of the unit and create it to be too technical which is why they've never had an A2 mode on any of their units but the web browser technically does utilize one. Are you going to be running to your PC to add one of these to your cart to use it on PDFs? No, you're not going to be running PDFs on this. But if you had to, here it is. Here is the PDF experience. It is very quick. And again, remember, as we said, this has had massive RAM issues in the past up until Gen 3, Gen 4. So that it's working this cleanly is nothing short of a miracle. Now, there's something really interesting you can do on an Amazon Kindle is that even on a side loaded PDF, you can box everything, go over here, click translation and choose any language you want. I've now translated this PDF, which is in English to simplified Chinese. You can choose Portuguese, you can choose Arabic, you can choose anything you want and within seconds it does it should be properly right there so it really does break down the boundaries of your content that you're not able to read or consume because they kind of have you covered it does require internet connection to do this it's not on board but it still can do it you also have pinch and zoom which is really nice with a mini map up top which also gives you a thumbnail of it. Sometimes they give you a little bit of a outline bordered ghost, almost like a silhouette of the page, but this one actually tells you where you are on the page and it all happens so quick. I absolutely love the speed of this thing. In fact, it's so quick, it's almost uncharacteristic of a Kindle because Kindles are never traditionally this fast. There's always something in the way that breaks immersion, that upsets the user. There's just always a little something, especially in this world of onyxes and big me's and hyper tablets that utilize e-paper with ridiculous amounts of RAM and speed modes. This is very refreshing in both pun intended and no pun intended at the same time. Even though this body is a little bit wider in dimension, the wireless charging receptor is in the exact same place or at least vicinity compared to the previous generation, so you can use the same charging stand if you have one from the last unit. In the end, one of the biggest questions surrounding this unit is, is it worth upgrading from the previous generation? The answer is a resounding yes. The basic matcha might not be that much of a difference because it's really just a color change, or not even if you choose the black version. But this device is. It's different, it's bigger, it's thinner, it has a larger screen, is fast as all heck, has color options, it's waterproof, it's made with recycled materials. There's just so much different about this unit without encroaching on tablet territory like the likes of Onyx and Bigme. This definitely does warrant an upgrade. You can use the wireless charger, it feels good in the hand, and it is the clearest screen they've ever had. There's just nothing negative about the unit. This is truly one of the best things to come out from the big three in quite some time, so it gets a 9 out of 10. The Paper White Signature Edition 12th generation is a testament to how good a traditional old school electronic book reader can truly be. Thank you to Amazon Japan for sending us this sample, and thank you all for watching, and a huge thanks to all of our members.